Hi friends, it's Shannon and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. I'm so excited about this video. We're gonna go through the top and absolute best Dollar Tree hacks from the last year. We hacked things this year like shower curtains, shower curtain rings, and yes, even pool noodles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through 25 of the top hacks from the year. And if you see any product you wanna see more hacks of, definitely check the description box below where I'll have links to the full videos. I'm just highlighting the best here today. And we're gonna start with these oversized planters from Dollar Tree. You could find these during the springtime and I sure hope that we can find them again this spring because they are huge. They are the biggest planters I've seen at this price point. And the first DIY we're gonna tackle is this outdoor side table. We're gonna take some heavy duty adhesive and we're gonna flip that first planter upside down, add the adhesive onto the bottom side of the planter and flip another planter right on top of that. Now, when you go to flip the other one onto the bottom, there are little spaces and you sort of wanna to try to line those up with the top and the bottom. That way your adhesive has the most points of contact so that you get a really good and tight seal and bond there. Then what we're gonna do is we're also gonna add some of that construction adhesive onto the top rim of that top planter. And we actually had a leftover sign from our wedding. I didn't wanna throw it away because it is wood and we could always use it for something. And this project ended up being the perfect one for this. So I just flipped it upside down. So many people in the previous video, the original one, so we should have left it word side up to kind of have that memory. But I actually didn't even think of that when I was creating this. I just kind of wanted that clean slate. So I did go ahead and just use the unfinished side of this, but it does have a stain on it, which will also protect it from the elements. You can get these pieces of wood pre-cut and at your local hardware store. Now we need to cover up that gap in the middle. Well, it's not really a gap. It's kind of the seam in the middle and give it more of a finished look. So this is nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I wrapped it around the back, tied it in a knot a couple times, and then wrapped it around the middle a few times. It gave it a nice little detail too and covered up that adhesive. This side table literally only took maybe 10 minutes to make. It was so easy and so simple, and you can honestly just use it right away. It has held up so, so good. I also wanted to show you that it is still sitting on our front porch today, even with our Grinchy themed porch for Christmas time. I love this next project because it was the very first time I'd ever gotten to try using concrete for a project, and it actually turns out really, really great in the end. So I grabbed some of this Quick Crete 5000. I'll make sure to link this and along with all the other supplies I use throughout this video down in the description box below. So make sure to check that out. You'll also wanna make sure you have your safety gear on hand, safety glasses, gloves for sure. And you also need a broom handle from Dollar Tree. So we wanna remove the plastic end and then we can get to work working on our concrete. We're gonna make some plant stands. So there is a little bit of a trick to using concrete. It's all about getting that right consistency. So I didn't do any specific measuring, just put in quite a bit into my Dollar Tree planter and then slowly added water to that so that it would kind of come up with a pancake batter type consistency. Do lots of mixing here. You wanna make sure you get all of that powder incorporated in there. And this is the consistency that I ended up with. So not too soupy, but not too thick either. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that broom handle and we're gonna set it right down in the center of our flower pot. I did use some painter's tape to kind of help me keep that pole sticking straight up in the middle as that concrete dried. Please take one second, pause, and hit that thumbs up button. That helps out my channel so, so much, and I would so much appreciate it. Now, 
Now, unfortunately, at this point, I realized I did not want that sticker on my broomstick pole. So instead of trying to wiggle it off, I just hit it with some spray paint that helped hide it. Of course, you can remove the sticker if you want. You'll just need some Goo Gone to help remove that adhesive that's left behind. Once the concrete completely dries, just make sure to check the recommended dry time on the concrete that you use. Then we can move on to the next step. And this is a Dollar Tree plant hook. Now, don't do what I do here because <laughs> I got so many comments in the original video that I hung this upside down and I completely 100% agree. I think I was just thinking it looked pretty the way that I was doing it, but it's definitely not practical and you'll see why here in just a little bit. But still the same steps, just flip yours the other way when you go to install it. I just kind of held it in place, drilled holes where the screws were needing to go. And then to also help kind of reinforce this and make sure the screws stayed in that pole, I also grabbed a 5 8 inch size dowel rod from, do or from Walmart and I inserted that down into the middle of the pole. That gave those screws something to kind of bite into as I screwed that plant stand in place. However, I would say it kind of helps if you have another set of hands for this part. It was kind of difficult to hold that, hold it all together, but I ended up making it work. You can still do it as one person, but just be patient with it. And then here's the few that I made for our garden and you can just slip your plants onto the hook and this is where the problem comes in. The wind just kept taking my plants and throwing them off of that hook. So I either needed to squeeze that hook closed or what I did eventually is flip those the right way and then I didn't have any more problems. Now, speaking of planters, I also did a video on how to hack terracotta pots. You can find these at Dollar Tree during the spring and summertime, or you can find them at the craft store year round. They have so many different options and they're still very, very inexpensive. This next project was one of you guys' favorites. It was taking three different sized pots and creating a cute garden gnome. So you can of course paint your gnome whatever colors you want. They have outdoor patio paint, which I'll link down below. That will keep your colors and your project nice and protected throughout the different temperature changes and weather. If you're gonna be putting this outside, you do want two of your pots the same color and the third one you will paint a third or a second color, I should say. So this pink pot is going to be his body and the green pots are going to be his hat. So we're going to add a white beard, sort of a upside down teardrop shape onto the pink pot using some white paint and then also coming in with some black paint to create some little feet. I always seem to get very mixed reactions when it comes to gnomes. It seems that you either love them or they are just not your favorite thing. You guys will have to let me know what your stand is down in the comments below. But I will say I do have a few gnomes that I decorate with during the spring and during Christmas time. And now that our paint is all dry, we can start building and stacking our gnome. I am using some hot glue for this in this video. However, I would highly recommend using either a construction adhesive or a super glue, something that's gonna be more weather resistant if you're gonna put this outside. That way it will withstand the elements and hold up and you can use it year after year. 
but for my purposes, I just hot glue mine together. We also need to give our gnome a nose. So this is a wooden bead, but it is a half wooden bead. I'll link these down below too. And I'm just gluing that right in the middle of his beard there underneath his hat. And that's all there is to creating a terracotta pot gnome. We're also going to make a lantern for outdoors with a terracotta pot, a small saucer, and also one of these Dollar Tree vases. Now, since mine wasn't gonna be out in the rain, I used some filler, just some packing paper to go in the bottom of the terracotta pot before adding some stones to the top. If yours is gonna be out in the rain, definitely fill the entire thing with rocks though. Then you can add your saucer on top, your vase on top of that, add some more stones into your vase, pop a little candle in, and there you have it, the quickest and easiest and pretty outdoor candle holder or lantern. And now let's hack some mason jars. So yes, you can find mason jars at Dollar Tree, but honestly, the cheapest way to buy these is in a pack of a dozen. I've seen these at our farm store for as cheap as $7.99 for 12 of them. So keep an eye out for good deals and good bargains. The difference is these ball jars have raised uh, detail on them, whereas the Dollar Tree ones are smooth. And I really like that aspect of the Dollar Tree ones. It makes it a little bit nicer to customize for crafting. This one doesn't matter so much. We're gonna take a mason jar and take the lid off. We're gonna smash a hole, literally smash a hole right down into the lid part. And you can do that by using a large nail and a hammer. You just hammer in a few little nail holes into the center of that lid. And we are going to put some jute inside our mason jar, pull that up through the lid. This is one of the craft supplies that I use so, so much. So this is one I use almost daily still. So I thought I would throw this in there. If you have trouble with your jute kind of rolling all over the place, this helps with that. And it's also nice to be able to know where it's at. You just grab your jar out, throw it on your table, and you can have your jute or string or yarn or whatever um, kind of twine you wanna use this for handy whenever you need it. I always feel like the quickest hacks are sometimes the best ones, and I have to agree with this one. It takes next to no time to do. We need some glass beads and a solar light from Dollar Tree. We're gonna fill our mason jar up with those glass beads. We don't even need the metal top lid part of this mason jar. We're gonna literally just sit our solar light right down on the inside. If you wanna add a little bit of silicone adhesive or sealant around the edge to keep that down in there to keep water out, you can do that too or you can skip that part altogether. It just looks so, so pretty. You could even fill the entire mason jar up and you'd even get a colored glow. This is an easy way to create a tabletop solar light for your outdoors. We all love these garden trim pieces from Dollar Tree. I found several ways to recreate them. We're gonna make a hook system, which would be so pretty in an entryway or in a command center type station. I do have these miter shears, which I love. They cut through different materials. They also cut at angles if you need them to. You'll also need some heavy duty adhesive. We're gonna work on the garden trim piece first, cutting off the little plastic feet. This is where those miter shears come in handy, but you can also use 10 snips or some heavy duty scissors. You'll also need to cut off the little connector pieces that are on both sides.
These white hooks are also from Dollar Tree, but I thought it'd be nice to make them blend a little bit better with that garden trim piece. So using some black chalk paint to paint those instead of using them plain white, it'll blend much better. We're also gonna be using some paint stir sticks as not only a trim piece, it also is a camouflage kind of mechanism. I will link these down in the description box below too. I did have to trim them just a little bit to make them fit in the exact size and width as that garden trim piece. So just using a really simple hand saw and miter box. Again, I will link this down below. This is a staple piece in my craft stash. We do want to make these trim pieces look more like natural wood or more of a decorative wood. So this is a brown acrylic paint, just painting that wood to make it look like it's faux stained and it'll stand out a little, get, a little bit against the trim piece and those hooks. So just paint those completely out and let them dry. And then we're gonna start assembling this all together. To do that, we're gonna use some zip ties to zip tie the hooks right onto the bottom of this trim piece that is going to ensure that these are not going to come off. Make sure to trim the extra tails that are kind of hanging off there. And then we're going to apply the wood trim with some super glue. So is this not so, so pretty? So of course you could use these for keys and it's something a little more functional like for scarves or mittens and hats during the winter time, but it's so pretty also styled and designed with like a wreath, lantern, some beads to make it decorative too. You can also use these trim pieces to kind of dress up something like these sconces that I'm gonna show you how to create. These are wood scraps that I had. I just cut them down to the same length and I also just cut two smaller ones depending on the size of candle holder that you have. You wanna adjust the sizes here to make them bigger or smaller. These are one by eights cut down to size, but use whatever you have on hand, or you can also have a hardware store cut down some wood for you too. Whatever fits the size of your space is best here. I'm using some gray chalk paint first as a base layer, and then some white chalk paint over that to create a kind of rustic, weathered wood look. You can of course paint yours whatever color or wood stain them to match your decor. And here's where that garden piece comes into play. We're gonna actually cut these little archways apart. So that way we have individual ones and we can put each one onto each one of the sconces. Before we add the garden trim, we are going to mark the backside of the longer piece and drill some pilot holes through that into the front. And the littler pieces is going to be the little shelf for the front of our sconces. So again, pre-drilling some holes onto there so they line up with the holes on the bigger piece and then screwing some wood screws from the backside into the shelf onto the front. That'll give us a nice ledge for a candle holder. Then you can use some glue to apply your trim piece onto the front, add your candle holder, some greenery, and you have some really simple and inexpensive, beautiful sconces for your home.
I love the Dollar Tree has so many options for shower curtains and there are so many different ways you can use these. Make sure to check out the original video that I'll have linked down below so you can see more ideas. I wanna share two of my favorites here in this video though. And the first one is just, they have these great canvases that are huge. They are 11 by 14 size. We're gonna cover that with a shower curtain. These are really pretty. These are actually some of the pretty shower curtains that Dollar Tree carries. And all you have to do is lay out your shower curtain so it's flat, kind of get all the wrinkles out, pick a section where you really like the pattern or the print, lay your canvas over that area, trim around it quite a bit larger than the actual size that you need. And then you can come in with some hot glue and glue around all of the edges, basically just kind of wrapping it like a messy present in the back because you're not going to see the back. And then you just kind of trim off any of the extra and excess and you have a piece of artwork that you could make several of using the same shower curtain and those inexpensive canvases to really get a beautiful look for your home. This next one, you'll have to look on the packaging of the shower curtains at Dollar Tree. They don't all have them, but some do have these little magnets in the bottom. So if Dollar Tree doesn't have any magnets on hand, grab these shower curtains and use those instead. And then you can also check their stickers. They have some of the cutest stickers at Dollar Tree. These are 3D little cactus ones and you can pop those magnets out of the shower curtain. And then these stickers already had foam dots on the back. So it's literally just as simple as pushing a magnet into that foam dot on the back. And you have the most simple, easy and quick decorative magnets you can use in your kitchen. Now in the shower curtain video, I asked if you wanted me to also hack shower curtain rings and it was a very overwhelming response that you absolutely wanted to see me hack these. So I have my favorites in this video, but I will link the full video down in the description box. We're gonna use this first one to create a napkin ring. So you can do this in a lot of different ways. This one looks really classy. If you tie some jute around your shower curtain ring, use some hot glue and then wrap the shower curtain ring completely in that jute. Then this is also some greenery from, I believe Walmart, but it was only 97 cents, I think. So you can still get really good deals even at Walmart. I'm using some of the little greenery off of here and hot gluing that right onto the top to give it a little bit of color. And then of course you just slip it onto a napkin for your place settings. And I don't think anybody would ever know that this was a shower curtain ring to start. This next one is just really, really fun. And if you have some little ones, this would be a fun one to do with them. Definitely do this part for them though. You can just take those miter shears that I showed you earlier or some wire cutters, some heavy duty pair of snips and cut off the little connector piece in the middle. So this is the first side and you'll also want to do the other side too. Definitely highly recommend also taking some sandpaper to those rough edges to smooth them down. Now this next part is so, so fun. We're gonna make some pretty bracelet. So grab your favorite colored nail polish. You can even find some at Dollar Tree. And what you're going to do is, well, I first started by using the bottle and kind of pouring it in, but unfortunately it all just kind of went to the bottom. So you need to do smaller little drips with the paintbrush and just kind of set the paint right on top of the water. And you'll do this with however many colors you want. You can even swirl it around a little bit. And we're basically going to hydro dip these bracelets. 
Then you'll grab a pair of pliers or tweezers, gently set down your bracelet on top of the water, push it down in the middle, swirl it around, pull it back out, and you have a really cool marbleized look on your plastic. So I had a lot of fun playing with different colors and just improving my technique of how I set these down in the water and tried to get some of that off before pulling it up. So it does take a little bit of practice, but I really don't think you can go wrong from the very beginning. This one was just a pink and a purple color. And then I also played with other colors too. And you could even make for a bunch of different ones to match different outfits. Do this for a party. I just think this was a really fun project. And being that you can get a lot of these shower curtain rings for only a dollar, they are so inexpensive too. So yep, we even hacked some flip-flops this summer. So many ideas that you can use for these because Dollar Tree has tons of different styles and colors and options. I'll make sure to link the full video down below, of course. This first one, we're gonna use these cheetah print flip-flops from Dollar Tree to make a coaster. So the first thing you wanna do is pull those little buttons in the back up so you can snip those off. You want to keep the one at the toe intact though. And we're going to use a lid that I had on hand to create a circle. So just kind of do your best, either freehand a circle or find something that's about the right size to create a circle. We're going to draw that circle over the widest part of this flip flop and over that plastic toe piece. <laughs> Now, once we have that circle cut out, we are going to need to reattach those plastic pieces down into place. So I kind of eyeballed where I wanted them, used a screwdriver to puncture holes right in that spot all the way through. And what we're gonna do is then push that plastic back through, use some hot glue to keep it in place. And that's as simple as it is to create your own summertime wine glass coaster. Now this one, you don't need any kind of special style or color for this project. We're gonna make some stamps. And honestly, the bigger the flip-flop, the better for this one because you'll get more stamps for the area that you have to work with. 
So we're taking the plastic pieces off. You're gonna take a pencil and draw on some simple shapes or whatever shape you want. Use some scissors to cut those out and you just dip them into paint and you have your own custom stamp. But the cool thing about this is too, that your flip flops have two different sizes. So you can actually get two different sort of textures depending on what side of the flip flop that you use. So you can see here the different kind of textures that I was talking about where you can get the straight lines or the other side has more polka dots. I'm using some acrylic paint for this. It works better than like regular ink from a stamp pad. So use this to get creative, make your own wrapping paper or greeting cards or kids projects. Super inexpensive, fun and easy. And now we're gonna hack some styrofoam pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I was so, so glad that they had white pumpkins this year. Usually they come in the orange and the green. So it was nice to kind of start out with that blank slate to make some gorgeous fall decor. We're gonna be using all of these stems and picks and flowers from Dollar Tree to create a beautiful floral arrangement with the help of one of these strainers that you can get from the kitchen section, we're gonna use this kind of like a frog. I don't know if you've ever heard of those before, but it kind of helps you with your floral arrangements. I just drew on the size of circle that I needed in the top of the pumpkin, cut that out, and before we add that to the top, we are going to paint this pumpkin too using the color Plaster from Waverly. This is a really pretty chalk paint, especially for fall and just gave that a couple coats, let it dry, and we're gonna use some super glue then to attach the strainer right down in that hole on top of the pumpkin. Then you can go ahead and start arranging, cutting all your stems down so they will fit down into the little mesh pieces in your pumpkin. That's what's going to help hold all of our stems in place to create a beautiful fall arrangement. Dollar Tree also has these great hanging lids. And we're gonna insert one down into one of those styrofoam pumpkins to make a lantern. So we're gonna remove the stem off of this and use that lid as a template. Draw a circle around it so that way we know how big of a hole we need to cut in the top. Our glue gun is gonna be multifunctional for this project. The end obviously is metal and gets very hot. So we're gonna take our hot glue gun and literally push it down into the styrofoam to create holes all the way around. And because this is going to be a lantern and I wanna add a candle in there, I thought it'd be fun to add some gold paint to the inside, a metallic color so that we kind of sparkle and glisten off of that inside paint. Again, using that plaster colored chalk paint on the outside to give it a different texture and color. And then you can take your super glue, add it to the inside edge of your pumpkin and just press that hanging lid right down in there. Once your glue sets up, you can add your candle to the inside and hang it.
You all seem to really enjoy the Christmas pool noodle hacks video. So make sure to subscribe if you aren't already and come back as I'm hoping to also do a Valentine's Day pool noodle hacks video. So you can come back and not miss that. We're gonna hack these in a couple ways for Christmas time. I wanted to show you my two favorites. This first one is going to be birch candle holders. And what I'm doing is cutting a pool noodle down into three tiered sizes. I wasn't happy with the first set that I made, so I took one and cut it down more to give me more of an even and gradual stair-stepped effect. And that way I had three pool noodles that were different sizes, but they all kind of looked like they should all go together. So here's what I ended up with. You can cut yours down to whatever size you want. I also have some scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby, super inexpensive, less than a dollar a piece that we'll use here in just a little bit. But we wanted to, we're gonna be wrapping them with the, wrap, the scrapbook paper. So the tops are actually gonna be exposed. I didn't want them to be red, I want them to blend. So we're gonna take some chalk paint, paint the tops of our pool noodles before wrapping them with that scrapbook paper. You could just use some regular scotch tape to tape the back end onto the back side of your candle holder and keep everything in place and then just set a Dollar Tree tea light right on top. And I don't think anybody would know that these started out as pool noodles. This wreath is definitely not a new concept. I've seen these around for years. However, this is brand new to me because this was the first ever pool noodle wreath that I'd ever made. So I had fun. I thought I would throw this in here and just show you how simple it is to make a wreath form with a pool noodle. I wanted a smaller sized wreath, so I cut mine down before taking some duct tape and going over the seam to keep this all together. But you could add multiple pool noodles together if you wanted to make a big, huge wreath. So that's kind of a cool idea and concept. And I did use some green duct tape here to go all the way around my wreath. You can find green pool noodles too during Christmas time and that would save you this step, but the green duct tape does kind of give it more of a sturdiness and then decorate it however you want. I thought about adding some ornaments to mine. However, I didn't feel like I had enough to cover it. So instead I covered mine in regular ribbon and made a big nice bow, added some of those ornaments to the bow to make it sparkly. And that was all there was to creating your own pool noodle wreath. You could use this for so many different holidays and seasons, not just for Christmas time. And I also have a video on how to make your own wreaths, or I'm sorry, not wreaths, your own bows. So if you have trouble creating bows, I have a really simple tutorial to show you how to do that. And I'll make sure to link that down in the description box below too.
This was one of my favorite things to hack this year was wrapping paper. You can use paper for so many different things and you get a ton of paper on these wrapping paper rolls. So keep that in mind, hang on to your extra paper or grab a couple extra rolls at Christmas time or you can get different holiday and season papers at Dollar Tree all year long. This is a plank from Dollar Tree that I painted brown. Took some of this Dollar Tree wrapping paper, cut it down to size, and we're gonna Mod Podge that right onto the front of this sign. To Mod Podge, you just take some of that adhesive, put a nice generous layer down onto your piece first. Make sure you have a pretty even layer, but you want plenty as you want you don't want it to dry too quickly before laying your wrapping paper down on top of that. Smooth it out, make sure you get all the bubbles and wrinkles out before then applying your top layer right onto your wrapping paper. And you also wanna make sure to get any edges that might come up pushed down, otherwise they will just keep sticking up. And also this stuff dries clear, so you don't have to worry about using too much or too little. The more you use, the longer it will take to dry though. So keep that in mind. Here's what mine looked like after it dried all the way. I like to let these sit overnight before coming back and then you can rough it up if you want. I really like that rustic look. So this is a sanding block from Dollar Tree going around all of those edges and also around the wood edges too and then just added a simple decal onto the front of this to make this into a Christmas sign, but Dollar Tree also carries some wall stickers you could use for this too. We're also gonna use the same wrapping paper to make a Christmas banner. I'm also using a paper board punch that I'll link down in the description box below. You can find these on Amazon. So fun to make and they make the perfect size banners every time. You just line them up with the length of the banner or triangle that you want. It comes with this little blade that you then run around the track to create your pennant and then you can also scale down the size for your wrapping paper so then it will give you that layered effect which is really really neat Once all of my triangles were cut, I used this adhesive tape runner to attach the wrapping paper to the cardstock. I will link that down below too. I cannot live without this stuff. It is so nice to have on hand for paper crafting. And this board punch also comes with a hole punch at the top in the corner to create the perfect size little hole for you to then add string or ribbon into the corners to make your banner. I did use my Cricut machine to cut out cardstock letters to go on the fronts of these pennant pieces, but you can also use scrapbook stickers or you could even draw or write on your own letters too. And then a quick tip for stringing your banner together, you always wanna start with the last letter first, otherwise when you go to hang up your banner, your word will be backwards. So you do wanna start at the end and work your way to the front. You 
You all seem to really enjoy this Dollar Tree charger plate hacks video too. I'm gonna show you my two favorites from that video. I love that Dollar Tree carries Buffalo plaid items and they had chargers this year. So I grabbed one of those and also some of these handles from Hobby Lobby. I think they were only like two or $3 a piece. Always grab them when they're 50% off. I marked where I wanted these handles to go on this charger plate, took a drill, drilled holes at those marks, and then attached those handles and created a really quick and easy tray. If you love Christmas and Christmas projects, come on over to my other channel, The Cozy Christmas Cottage. I just actually posted my top 20 Christmas DIYs over there today. You can also click the iCards or click the link in the description box if you wanna go over and see those and are needing some more last minute Christmas ideas. I love it over there. It is Christmas from July through December. You don't wanna miss out on all the Christmas fun there. So here's a look at that cute tray. You can use it for Christmas treats. You can use it for Santa's milk and cookies, or you can put decorative things on it like I have here next to the fireplace. Now we're gonna make a Christmas candle slash flower arrangement. Is this charger plate not beautiful? I feel like it is so gorgeous for being at Dollar Tree. It's gold with those little ripples on the sides. We're gonna use these candles that are battery powered from Dollar Tree, along with some of their picks. They actually have some really nice picks too that had some pine cones and berries and some flocking on them. So I grabbed three of those and even some of these glitter berries, you'll need some styrofoam too. We're gonna cut that styrofoam into three different heights for each one of our candles, and we're gonna hot glue those all together and down onto the tray. The trick here is to cut all of the pieces from the picks apart so that you can use them individually. I started with the greenery first and the berries and then added some pine cones. That way I was getting nice coverage. The aim of the game here is to cover up all of that styrofoam so you don't see it. And it helps to also add your candles in there so you can see what is still hanging out. That's when I came in with the glitter berries and kind of use those to hide any of those spaces. And then any extra greenery that I had on hand, just stuck it right down into the uh, styrofoam. And the end result was just this beautiful piece that cost less than $10 to create, 100% out of Dollar Tree supplies. This was the biggest tax video of the entire year with over 1 million views was this video showing you how to hack these mini Christmas trees from Dollar Tree. You all seem to really, really love this first one, which was creating a swag out of two Christmas trees. We want to take off all of those plastic pieces, but keep them around because there's you never know what you can use these plastic pieces for. And you guys had lots of great ideas for me, so I can't wait to try those out. And what we're gonna do is for these trees to make the swag, you're gonna put the ends together so that the greenery sticks out each side. And we're gonna take some wire, or you could also use zip ties here to attach them all together. I also thought it might be a good idea to add a little bit of hot glue in there to really secure and make sure these are not not gonna come apart. We're also going to fluff those trees up before adding some embellishments like a bow and some Dollar Tree berries.
Did you ever think about different ways you could use wreath hangers? Well, when I saw these metal wreath hangers, I had so many ideas. So I will link this video down below too, so you can see all of them. But these are my absolute favorite two projects of the entire year. I saved them for last. You'll need two of these wooden wall shelves from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna make a sort of bracketed shelf using the end pieces that kind of go over your door from the wreath hangers. So to make this look nice, we're gonna paint a brown paint onto the wooden pieces, kind of make it look like it's stained. And then we're going to basically cut down those shelf pieces so they're nice brackets for our shelves. So these wreath hangers are red and I wanted this to be more for every day. So I also took some black chalk paint and painted those brackets black. Then you're gonna need some super glue to piece this all together. I love this gel super glue. We're gonna add some to the back of the bracket, the top of the bracket, cover up those holes on the front so we don't see those and line those up flush with the top. And then what you'll do is you'll place that top wooden piece there and kind of hold it in place for about 30 seconds so that it sets up. And now we're going to decorate the front. This is of course optional. I created a decal, made sure it was nice and straight and even, applied that onto the front. I think this would be so cute if you added hooks onto the bottom too. To hang it, I just hammered in some sawtooth picture hangers onto each one of the corners on the back side, and you have a really pretty and functional piece. Now, this next project is probably one of my absolute favorite projects of the year. It is a stocking holder. So I had some scrap two by 12 that I literally just cut down to about five inches wide and cut that down into two smaller pieces. So with two cuts, I was then given these two pieces. The nice chunkiness is heavy enough to hold a stocking, which I love. And I thought it'd be pretty to add a design onto this too. So created a snowflake stencil, added that onto the bigger piece of wood, used some chalk paint to stencil that in, and then we're going to put this all together. It was kind of nice to stencil again as it had been quite a while since I had used any kind of stencils. I used to stencil wood signs all the time, which is kind of where this channel started. So it was nice to kind of go back and revisit something I used to really love to do and just don't do a whole lot anymore. And there's just such a nice difference between stenciled versus vinyl sometimes. I love the way that snowflake turned out on the stocking holder. We're gonna take some tin snips here and cut this wreath hanger down to size. We're gonna use the hook end of this and I will make sure to link these tin snips down in the description box below too. Really nice tool to have on hand when you need to cut thin metal like this. We're gonna put that hook flush at the bottom of this piece of wood, kind of bend it so that way we can then epoxy this onto the top of the base of our stocking holder. This epoxy, you can also find at Dollar Tree. It's a two-part adhesive, and when you mix them together, it activates and it starts to create a really heavy-duty adhesive that you can then use for all kinds of different materials. You just take a popsicle stick, kind of stir it all together, add some of that adhesive to the bottom of your hook, add it to the wood. We're also gonna do the same thing with our snowflake piece of wood on the bottom of that. That way we can then attach that onto the top of the base. I just wanted to take a minute here to thank every single one of you who has subscribed, left a comment, hit the thumbs up button. It has been so humbling to have you a part of this DIY family. You are seen and you are appreciated. I'm so excited for a new year filled with weekly ideas, DIYs, hacks, and growing alongside of all of you. 
I wish you all a blessed new year and thank you all again from the very bottom of my heart. Make sure to check the description box to links to all of the full videos that I featured today and products that I mentioned throughout. And just, I wish everyone a wonderful holiday season. I can't wait to start the new year with you. See you very soon.